and we're in Budapest and Dustin is a core developer for Ubuntu and we're going to talk a little bit about orchestra. Robbie Williams, the server team manager, announced orchestra in his plenary session yesterday and so Dustin can you tell me a little bit about what orchestra is and how it came to be? There's an interesting story there so I'd like for people to know how that came about. Sure. Um, okay, so Ubuntu Orchestra is a, uh, a free open source project. It's uh, led by the uh, Ubuntu server team. A number of a number of members of the server team working for Canonical uh, really realized a need for a way to deploy um, deploy servers in mass, uh, a massive scale. Um, you know, for a very long time, we've are for, we've always had a dedicated CD image, an ISO, for the Ubuntu server. Uh, we did quite a bit of work a couple of years ago uh, trying to get that ISO to deploy cloud, uh, deploy you know Ubuntu Enterprise Cloud. Um, for the most part, that involved taking that ISO from machine to machine and installing it over and over and over again. And uh, you know, for 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 bootstrapping a, a small cloud or a demo or something like that, uh, that's quite adequate. Um, however, you know, cloud promises massive scale, and, and you know, you've got a, a couple of management systems, and then uh, you want hundreds or, or thousands, maybe uh, tens of thousands of nodes, and the, those nodes really develop, um, uh, the, the, you know, develop the, the scale of your cloud. Um, installing the prospect of installing uh, a, a thousand servers using, you know, a handful of, of physical ISO images, f physical CDs, is you know just not realistic. No sysadmin would, would do that in their right mind. Um, and so what we what we found and what we've known for a long time is that uh, any major you know Linux shop, Ubuntu shop, for instance, would would almost certainly have their own network deployment installation mechanism. Uh, and I don't know how many people have 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 duplicated work and effort there, uh, creating and recreating and, and creating again network installs. Um, and so the, the orchestra project really came about in a way to solve that problem. We needed a, 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 a network install service for the cloud. I mean, m myself being a eucalyptus developer uh, or a packager of, of eucalyptus, um, I, I had a stack of, of laptops that were my servers, and I needed to deploy Ubuntu Enterprise Cloud to five, five systems on a, on a daily basis, or if I'm you know, rolling packages, I needed to do that over and over and over again. And I didn't want to install each one of those manually. They needed to be, you know, um, hands off, just completely automated. Uh, and and so I'd written my own little, uh, you know, every sysadmin's done it, but a, a Pixie booting TFTP installing uh, local network uh, mirror uh, system. And and what I found was that each of my colleagues basically had had done the same thing. And so um, we realized a, a need for a network installation service. And we'd each solved it kind of in our, our own independent way. So we had um, uh, a session um, in, in Belgium, in Brussels last year, a, a year ago, where we looked at the different ones we had written and um, didn't really decide on, on any one as being, as being the best option. So uh, nothing really happened during, during that cycle. In, in Orlando, though, uh, we had done quite a bit more thinking about that problem. And uh, one of, one of our, our former members of the server team, Matthias Gug, had the had a concept in mind, and um, he and I kicked it around quite a bit, uh, even after uh, the the UDS in Orlando, uh, to really to, to to really drive this using the best of open source projects. So Orchestra itself, uh, you know, we're trying to we're trying to write as little code as possible here. We're trying to glue together the best of open source, and that involves uh, Cobbler for one thing for our provisioning server. Cobbler is a, a a project run by the Fedora community um, has has quite a number of users, and having gotten a little bit more active on that mailing list and that IRC channel, we saw a number of people wanting to do Ubuntu things with Cobbler, wanting to run Cobbler on Ubuntu and run uh, uh, deploy Ubuntu guests from Cobbler. So uh, we picked up Cobbler, put it into the archive in the 11.04 cycle. Um, we call that our that's our provisioning server. There's a handful of services that go along with that. Uh, that's part of Orchestra. That's Orchestra provisioning server. We've also got an, an Orchestra um, uh, proxy mirror service, uh, which we use Squid Deb proxy by default. And what that does is ensures that the the, the Deb packages, the binary packages that you need to do your installation, uh, are locally cached so that they're on your local network. You're not going out, you know, across the internet every time you need to do an installation. 
Uh, once, uh, once a system's been provisioned, so that provisioning is a matter of getting the Ubuntu OS on the bare metal, and we, we have a custom pre-seed file that, that ensures that that goes um, you know, in a hands-off, automated, uh, no-touch manner. Uh, once, it, once it's installed and, and reboots, we use the cloud init functionality uh, from Scott Moser and, and the same thing we use in our EC2 and UEC images. It's the thing that uh, takes a virtual machine in the cloud world and you're able to feed it metadata and, and customization information. It's how you take a generic VM uh, cloud instance uh, and now a, an actual bare metal Ubuntu server and take that, that sort of identical image and customize it in such a way that it's, it's, a, useful, um, it's a useful and purposed server. Uh, once that happens, that's really the gateway to our, our configuration management interface. And for configuration management in Orchestra, we're using, uh, we're using Puppet for our, for our reference platform. Um, but, uh, you know, the Cloud Init piece is, uh, it really provides a gateway to any configuration management service. We're, we're talking about integration with Ensemble, and hopefully you've picked up on the, the, the mnemonic theme between um, Orchestra and Ensemble. It's two projects we really hope play well together and, and, um, and, and do some really interesting things. Um, I would say the, uh, the, the, the next piece coming after configuration management is a, a monitoring system, so integrating something like Nagios or others to monitor the systems that are deployed. Um, and then other things like power management, uh, integrating PowerNap um, as, a, as a service, something if you want to manage the power situation of your entire network. There's also uh, NUT, network uh, UPS tools. Um, and then, you know, I expect eventually Canonical to integrate uh, landscape and a landscape interface for something like this to drive that from a UI. Well, I know that you mentioned Eucalyptus um, in this and that in Robbie's announcement, he did mention that OpenStack was going to be the default instead of Eucalyptus. While Eucalyptus will still be available, OpenStack will be the default. So does Orchestra and all the pieces of Orchestra play nice with OpenStack now? Yeah, so OpenStack, uh, OpenStack and, and in some ways indirectly Eucalyptus uh, is, a, is a driving force for implementing uh, implementing orchestra altogether. It's it's something that we need. Uh, we needed an installation mechanism for uh, for doing a, a multi-machine cloud-based installation. Uh, we put quite a bit of effort into into reworking Debian installer in order to to deploy UEC. And as we as we integrate OpenStack, um, uh, and we need a mechanism to drive OpenStack installation. Uh, you know, we were we were facing the the prospect of, of needing to redo a lot of that, a lot of that work, a lot of that service discovery, and 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 somewhat manual work uh, from a from an end user experience of, of doing the installation. We we're going to have to redo that in the ISO itself. Um, and to be honest, that's none of us really felt like that was a very um, a, a very we weren't looking very far out with that. You know, the the prospect of going from system to system with an ISO doesn't scale, and certainly not to the scale that OpenStack promises. OpenStack promises uh, 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 cloud infrastructure um, for service providers, for ISPs, um, and we needed a, a smooth mechanism to deploy that, and, and doing that over a network and in parallel, uh, we're going to get that out of orchestra in ways that we just really can't do with a, with a single monolithic installer. So we're only in day three of UDS, and there's been some exciting announcements already concerning Ubuntu Cloud and, and other things. Um, what to you has been the most exciting part of this UDS so far? Hmm. Uh, the, the size of it. Um, 600 people are here um, this week. We heard, uh, we heard that number um, in, the, in the opening keynote from, from Jane and from Mark. Uh, that's tremendous. I mean, that's a that's that's a lot of developers, partners, uh, canonical employees and non-canonical employees, volunteers, sponsored individuals, um, press. Uh, it's it's really incredible. And the the, the size of the server track uh, and server and cloud track has, I mean, really just blown away any any UDS we've we've had so far. And um, you know, I might have expected something like this for an LTS UDS, you know, for, for w in our roll-up to, to 10.04, which was big, and um, what I hope is even bigger a year from now into 12.04. But um, I don't think, I've this is my seventh UDS, and there's, this is the first UDS where 
most server sessions are standing room only, um, and that's that's really phenomenal. Um, I'm really proud of that. That is exciting, and and I think we saw the standing room only um, in Belgium with the ARM sessions, and now to see that move to the server sessions here, I guess it shows just how undulating you know the development cycle is and what's important one cycle or what the emphasis is another cycle so you can tell that there's a lot of buzz around server and cloud this cycle what specifically not overlooking the 1110 cycle it's going to be a good milestone an important milestone but looking toward 1204 and that LTS release what are you most looking forward to in that release and what can we expect from server hmm. Yeah, um, <clears throat> twelve oh four will be will be huge. Uh, it, it it has to be. It's our uh, it'll be our fourth uh, it'll be our fourth LTS. Um, you know, if you look at some of the historically some of the big uh, operating systems, their their fourth release. There's this weird cadence that happens around the fourth release. You know, um, uh, NT was Windows fourth release. You know, uh, RHEL four was a was a breakout release for for RHEL. Um, Debian, you could say the same thing about Debian 4.0. Uh, to, to in many ways, this is a Ubuntu Server 4.0. This is our fourth uh, five-year supported um, release. Uh, we're we're going to have um, partnerships with, with all the major server vendors, I predict, by that point. Um, I think we will be taken seriously in, in just about any hardware enterprise that's doing work with, with server server hardware. Um, I believe the the, the big um, uh, the big workloads Ubuntu is going to be a serious player as uh, as the server platform for that. Um, OpenStack and cloud, I think, will continue to to really drive innovation um, with respect to cloud. I think we're doing some some we're continuing to do some amazing work around that around that. Uh, I think Ensemble will be right awesome solution for a problem that that many many people recognize um, and I really expect uh, the the platform as a service the PaaS uh, realm to 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 bloom and um, I think we'll see proliferation of PaaS offerings on top of Ubuntu so we're gonna do a good job continue to do a good job with Ubuntu as the as the, uh, the hypervisor and as the cloud host and we'll continue making an outstanding guest and I think people are going to develop platforms that that just run on top of that uh, for many for many years to come starting uh, you know if we haven't been doing it already absolutely starting with with 1204. Well Dustin thanks so much for stopping by and talking to me about orchestra and the server and, and cloud and, and what's up and coming for 1204 and I look forward to seeing not breezing past 11.10 but seeing how we journey to 1204 through 1110 so so thank you so much oh and before we wrap up there's one more thing i'd like to ask how can users and contributors get involved with the server what mailing list what irc channel where do they need to go to help you guys out uh yeah um i'd say uh ubuntu server is is a vibrant community we've got plenty of people helping and we'd love to to see some more um the IRC channel is uh, pound Ubuntu server on irc.freenode.net. Um, we've got a mailing list. Uh, just, I mean, if you look for Ubuntu server mailing list, uh, it's ubuntu-server at, at lists.ubuntu.com. Um, you know, those are two great ways to get involved. Uh, but, but honestly, I'd say, um, I'd say just you know, run Ubuntu when you when you get the opportunity and uh, try it in between those LTSs. I know that's what that's what you and many users are looking forward to. But we're doing some amazing stuff in the in the three leases, releases in between each each LTS. Um, and be you know be vocal about it. Uh, I think uh, I think the the desktop gets a lot of a lot of a lot of the press around here, and and we're doing cool stuff too. I promise. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, and look forward to seeing what, what all you guys bring to the table this next release. 